I'll let my esteemed panelists take their seats, please. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, How are um, you? I'm a man, <laughs> formerly man. I was a man and I'm, no, no, of course not. Colette, you, you're a wonderful moderator. Why are you asking us this question? <laughs> You were, ch you were kind of having some of the same problems. Do you mind telling us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, so in, in at Outfittery, we actually have not the problem not to find great women. We rather have so many great women working for us who have a lot of power, a lot of energy. I mean, our mission is to, to dress men, actually. And so we, we rather need to look that we find the balance and find... An, good men, actually, in our, for our management You're having team. trouble finding men yes. in your management team. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> now, is this something that you openly talk about as a management team? We need to find, we need to diversify? We haven't so far talked about that. Are you going to um, talk about it now? But since we are two female co-founders, so it's, it's rather a challenge to find the right guys who have the nuts to, to stand up and say the things that they, that they really think. So is this a call to action, perhaps, to this audience? Maybe, if you want to apply, <laughs> check out our job page. <laughs> That's actually great. So honestly, all of you dress fantastically. That's not a problem. But why not join the outfittery team? Um, I, I am being a little bit light, but I do want to turn to something uh, a little more serious, which is um, you talked about a, um, an unnamed prestigious conference that you went to. And kind of the feeling that you got there, I don't know if you actually saw something or if it was a conversation. But do you want to tell me a little bit about kind of the, um, the insight that you had there? Yes, I, I will. Um, I will not share which conference it was, but it was a conference where a lot of women are coming together, talking about women in tech, talking about how it feels to be women in tech, and all these things. And they were all talking about, okay, we should help each other. We should, we should network, and we should help each other to get all these great positions and so on. And then I, 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 had, a, I had a request for one of these women to do me a favor, actually. And I needed to follow up three times in the, last, in the weeks after this conference in order to really do me this favor. And I was really kind of depressed by this because I thought like, okay, wait, we have been on this conference, we talked about, okay, let's help each other and then it's so hard to do me this one fucking favor. <laughs> Gabby, I see you want to yeah, add? Yeah, definitely. I love uh, Madeleine Albright's sentence, basically, that there is a special place in hell for all of the women that don't help other women, and I think that's true. <laughs> so maybe they get what they deserve later on. Yes, 
I mean, absolutely. And this is, this is the only thing I felt afterwards. So let's stop talking about it and executing. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's help each other. If, if, if we really want to do this, not just talking about it this way, this sucks. And, and I really respect that you're not calling anyone out in particular, but do you think this is a, a is this only, I mean, don't, aren't, isn't this endemic? Do men, men of course do this as well. I mean, they pay, they'll say, oh, of course I want to help, and then they never, it's, they're passive aggressive, they don't respond. So I would actually even say the broader thing is just, let's, you know, this is a wonderful industry. It, it is a very helpful, it's, it's unlike any other, where we tend to be very open, we talk to one another, we try to you know, be, exchange information. But one, one thing I do find, and I, I make note of people who aren't of the same stuff, and I just push them aside. Slowly, they don't get any of my time. Anyone who doesn't have that same spirit gets just slowly pushed to the side. So I've noted everything you've said and agree with it, but I'm going to make it not necessarily gender specific. Um, absolutely, I absolutely agree. It's not gender specific, but. So Gabby is, is much beloved, but I don't think there's anyone who adores her more than Steffi, who said, I, I hope I get this right. When I told Steffi Gabby was on the panel, she said, oh, just let Gabby talk the whole time. She's brilliant. That'll be a superb panel, <laughs> which I thought was very dear. I actually now agree with her. Um, but Gabby, in our conversations, you told me that you're, you just see great opportunity, unlike anything you've seen before. And when you tell me that, I actually, you know, a lot of people can, can use superlatives and I'll be polite and nod, but when you use superlatives, I take a special note. And I hope I don't butcher what you had expressed by saying that you said that you, know, the, the, you see things converging between you know, da data revolution, evolving work models, especially work flexibility, IT, that you're just amazingly enthusiastic. But I'm curious, what is it that you see exactly? Yeah, so it's you know, clearly times of unprecedented change. And um, we're living you know, through the data explosion or information technology revolution which is really fundamentally changing everything, how we live, work, and communicate. And in this idea economy, it's very fast. You can scale very fast. You've seen that with new business models popping up every day, and many of you are part of that scene. And what's so interesting is if you take a look at the Ubers or the Airbnbs, uh, just to name some very successful ones, or Facebooks, they don't own any of the stuff that they sell. So Uber doesn't own any cars, and Airbnb doesn't own any hotels, and Facebook doesn't really create any content. So everything is, is a marketplace and you can scale it up very, very quickly. And because of this flexibility that we're seeing, we're also seeing how overall the marketplace in terms of hiring or in terms of you know, work, you know, how you get work done is changing very quickly. And even large companies are starting to, to hire, not necessarily on university degree, but on skill set that they hire more flexibly rather than you know, what used to be our parents' job market with these long-term contracts. What's also interesting is that most kids in high school will end up in jobs that don't exist today. They will help create some of these jobs. So it's, it's amazing you know, the type of changes that we're seeing. Even at HP, I work for HP, we, we crowdsource a lot of the solutions that we're providing for our customers with some of the best and brightest people in the world rather than having all of the talent in the company and that's reality today. And just think about where this is gonna go going forward. So I do think that changes, you know, how we prepare ourselves for our career, whether it's in a startup or in a larger company or a small, medium-sized company, where you keep investing in yourself all the time, where you keep reinventing yourself, reinventing your job. And I think because every company is a digital company, um, no matter what you sell, you have to have digital skills in order to make decisions. What I, I saw the other day, which is interesting, is that CMOs, chief marketing officers, have bigger IT budgets than CIOs and the information technology officers. If that's the case, you know, they make a lot of technology decisions. You gotta know what the hell you're talking about. So I do think, you know, it's very, very exciting times. Cards are being mixed again. Doesn't matter whether you're male, female, young or old or whatever your background is. I do think, you know, if you understand how all of this is changing and to take advantage of it, I think you're in a really good spot. Quick follow-up question. When you say reinventing yourself, what do you, what do you mean? You know, that brings up images of Madonna to me. What? Yeah, you know, there, there are some phenomenal websites out there that help you um, build the skills that you think, you know, where you're maybe good and you want to be absolutely excellent. So one is do-it-yourself genius, and it has all of the MOOCs, the massive open online courses, 
Um, I use it all the time, whether it's the Khan Academy or whether it's something in Udacity or edX or whether it's even, I learn Italian right now, I do it on Duolingo. These are all sites where you can go to, to build your skills. I'm taking a coding course, so all of this stuff, just to know what, you know, what, what, is, what is happening so I can have an opinion, an informed opinion. So I, I do think that's what it's all about and people need to build that into their agenda every week to take a look at what it is that they want to achieve and you know, if it's Thursday from 10 to 12, yeah, take yeah, the time. Take and do the it. time, invest Absolutely. in yourself. You also told me that you felt that business as usual was not sustainable anymore. What do you mean by, what is business as usual? Absolutely, Why? I mean, you, you take a look at you know, this agenda right now, everything is sitting on the cloud. If the cloud had a mm -hmm. monthly electronic bill, it'd be $6.6 .6 billion. In a few years time, we need 50% more energy and then we're gonna run out if we could keep doing what we're doing. Then add to the fact, you know, how much waste we're producing. We're using the resources of one and a half Earth every year. Actually in Europe, it's three. Um, soon it's going to be two Earth. The issue is we only have one, so we need to do things very, very differently, very, very fast, and really think more in the circular economy, where you're reusing whatever used to be waste and turn it into a resource by, you know, refurbishing or re reutilizing it. And what I also think is very important is to pay a lot more attention to climate change. We've seen it at the UN. Uh, gotten a lot more um, attention the last few days and, and you know, a lot of politicians coming out there understanding that we need to sort of accelerate things. Elon Musk has just said, look, I mean, we're thinking, we're looking at the big migration right now, just wait a few years and see what climate change will force to do, you know, people to do, and it's gonna be massive. And either we understand it, we do things differently, whether we're in a small startup, an individual, or a large company, business as usual is absolutely not an option. We're not gonna have the same conversation in a few years' time if we don't change fundamentally. I, I just, thank you. <laughs> So, Steffi, are all your children from the same ma Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to ask that question. <laughs> um, Steffi, in our um, conversations, I just, I had the most fun because you told me something I didn't know at all, that it took you a long time for you to find your passion and that you had had many jobs. I'm really curious a, a little bit about what you've done, and maybe there are things that we don't know, and really what your passion is and, and why. Thank you, Colette. Um, what we just heard from Gabi, I really underline every word. What she said is, for example, the kids who are in high school right now don't know what the job description will be they will one day have. And this is what really triggers me because what do you need for your future job? What do you need for your job right now? Of course, you need skills. Of course, you need curiosity. Of course, you need digital skills. But most of the young people I see, they have wrong visions. They want to be rich one day. They want to be a successful CEO. But they have no passion for the things they do. Um, Colette just asked me, you have done so many jobs. Yes, I have done many, many jobs in order to find my passion. And I found it when I was 40, 45 or so. So young kids here, you have long time to go with to find your real passion. And I really encourage you, don't take the best, don't, don't take the next opportunity. Just ask yourself whether it's right for you. It's not on money, it's not on, and five day week. It's not on um, my neighbor is doing this and I have to do this also. It's on yourself, on, on your passion to do the things you like to do. And with this, you will be someday a success. And I really, I have four, uh, three daughters and one boy. And when they get waitresses, or when they, whatever they do, I encourage them, as long as they are not taking a boring job just to find some money. And um, just, you know, you know what I want to say. Just, just take a job and wait for the good chance to live your passion. And, and isn't the flip side of that um, also... Evangelist. I, I, I think... You know, even if it doesn't seem sexy, like, but it's your passion, go do it. Just because everybody else is an investment banker doesn't mean you need to go be one, right? Or a lawyer. I mean, if you really, really want to do, you know, mime, okay. Yeah. 
go do it. Like, there's yeah. got to be a way. And, and I don't mean that sounds like also a statement from privilege. I mean, no, you're not going to be a multimillionaire, probably. I don't know, maybe Marcel Marceau was. I don't know. Um, but you just can't let the crowd dictate to you. And it's hard. It's hard to stand up and say, this is stupid. Um, I mean, we all have the wrong visions. Oh, not all, but many of us have so visions and role models in their heads. It's, it's find your own, find, get, your, get to be your own role model. I think it's so necessary, and especially in our changing times. I, I'm so convinced that our societies will be not the same in 10 years anymore. We all will change a lot. And, you better prepare for yourself, and you better be yourself, and not any strange role models. Did you take a big risk in your career? All the time, all the time. And I, I, when Hubert Berda asked me to um, work for him, I had, I even hardly could use a computer. I, I, I was the total analog person and had no idea about digital things. And all of a sudden, I had to talk with all these guys, mostly men, about digitalization. This was a risk, and it still is a risk every day. I love it. <laughs> and Anna, you took a huge risk, yeah? Do you consider Did it I? a risk? Tell me. I actually never felt that it's a risk what I'm doing. Because you were passionate about it. Yes, absolutely, because I knew there's no other way for me than founding a startup, actually. No. It was inevitable. It just was. It, it wasn't. <laughs> um, Steffi, one last question, which was, you know, you talk, you've seen and met many investors and entrepreneurs, and you, we talked interestingly about how you found some people who complain, they play the victim, or even worse, they're envious, they're backstabbing about, um, and you had some insight about this, or actually better yet, some advice, and I'd like to, I'd like to draw it out of you here. I already forgot what I told you, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think the, up, the gist was something kind of close to what Anna said, which was, shut up. <laughs> you know, shut up. By the way, if you are if you're, have enough time to be envious and backstabbing, you're probably in the wrong job. Yeah. And get out and stop poisoning our, our ecosystem. Thank you very much. Yeah. And just get on with it. Yeah. Just do it. It's a wonderful slogan. I think it's very rare. If you, I'm a pattern recognizer. As I said, I don't understand any digital things, but I can follow patterns. I can see in um, personalities like Marissa Mayer, like Mark Zuckerberg, like whatever, like Colette Ballou, they are driven, drivenness. And I, I think I really uh, mean that you should also work on your pattern, recognize, pattern recognition abilities. It helps a lot. You can see patterns wherever you are. Collect them, make something out of them, bring people together, learn from them. I think this is very important. I, we only have a few seconds left and I wanna thank each of you because you've enriched, uh, our conversations over the last few weeks have been delightful. Look what happens when you ask three passionate people about something they don't get to talk about. I don't know how we could have created this panel uh, otherwise, and I appreciate all of you letting me talk to you and speaking to me candidly. I hope you all have gotten some wisdom out of it and know that we're all gonna be here so you can ask us further questions if there's something that especially sparked your interest. Um, and I just wanna thank you all very, very much. It's been a delight. Thank, thank you, you, Colette. Thank you. Next time there will be a lioness, <laughs> not a Leo. And thank you, Bits and Pretzels, for this great conference. And I love DLD. Thank you very much. Oh. Colette, here. Oh my God, we're Yes, I learned it from the best. Just take, take, take one. Uh -uh, I want two. You want two? No, no come on. Stop. Here, just take one. Okay, just one. You got it? You got it? Yeah. Good. Okay, Gabby, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Here, for you. Thank you. Okay, bitteschön. Ah, Stefanie.